Hi, I'm Matthew Chen and we're here with Tears Zero Games and here's Andre who's recently topped YCS Utrecht 2020. How did you finish? I uh, finished in top 64 with my invoked Shadol strategy. Oh, okay. But still, congrats. Uh, and let's move on to the deck profile. So, I played a 42 card main deck and the only reason for that is I just wanted to maximise my engine cards. So, we start with three, Alistair. He's very important, he's the, the only main normal summon of the deck and he's actually really important because giving Winda a thousand extra attack points is really hard for a lot of decks to deal with. I played three, Squamata, which is basically an upstart goblin, it's any name of any card in your deck. For the same reason I played three, Hedgehog, it searches any Shadow in the deck and you just basically want to use your whole deck as a utility. So, Wendy is the new one, so she is basically a free summon of any other one. So she's similar to Squamata, so she gives you access to any of them. But instead of just the Grave effect, she can give you access to their uh, Graveyard effect and Flip effect, because she summons them to the field. So that's very important, you have ways to flip them up as well. We played that. I played two copies of Shadow Beast. He's a utility one, but sometimes it does come up where you want to both draw a card and set him in the same turn. So I decided to play two. He's also integral to the mirror match. Now I played two Shadow Dragon for the same reason, like you set him as an interrupt with the trap card, but he also deals with uh, spell and traps and the back row decks is actually a big problem sometimes because they're not putting up any extra monster zones. So I wanted two just to pop multiple back rows. So that's the main Shadows, and then I played one of the new Water. Uh, she is very important for a combo with the Trap card, and she's also a DD Crow for three cards. Note, you can also banish your own Alistair to loop it with Invocation for longer. Oh, that's nice, yeah. So it's nice interaction, and also uh, she can also be sent with our Shadow Fusion with Meltdowns in the field, so you can actually DD Crow when they can't respond. So I did actually banish um, some Spiral cards when they had Rescues in the graveyard, so they couldn't actually do anything about that. Uh, is that all the Shadows? Yeah, so that's all the Shadows and... Uh, just... So no Falco, is that the trend now? Or... Yeah, so Falco was mainly used as a one-off to help you grind late game. And with the new trap card, I don't feel you need that. And you also have a lot of free summons with Wendy. I didn't feel I would ever want Falco in my deck and it, I'd never want to draw it. Yeah, it feels a bit too slow for this deck right now. Yeah, and, and this deck can sometimes be slow. Like you do set one monster and pass and you don't want to die. So all of these have great flip effects, and also if you set a card, they think you've bricked, and sometimes people will play incorrectly thinking, oh, this guy's just bricked because he set one, and they attack into a hedgehog, and you grab your Shadow Fusion, and then you literally OTK the next turn. Yeah, that's nice. So then the only hand trap I decided to play was Gamma. So you'll see later on, there's a lot of spell cards that this is a combo with, but the main purpose is actually a light. So if you're going first, you try and make them Ash if they're playing Ash, but most of the time you're just using it to make Construct. That's pretty nice. And also I think people expect Gamma as well in this deck, so they're actually not going to hit a lot of your spell cards, which is actually really free for you. So then your Gamma just stays in hand and they let everything resolve and then you just use a Polymerization card and then you use Gamma anyway. So it pretty much served its purpose. And then I just played one Trick Clown, so... Didn't play any of the other clowns or the other trick cards. Like, I just wanted this as an extender going second with uh, Shadow Fusion. You just send this and then it gives you another light on board for Construct. So did you, you play any um, rank fours for it? I did think about playing Abyss Dweller, but some of the combos involve you using a lot of your resources. I was just trying to play the game where I was trying to lock them out with Winder, forcing them to go to the battle phase, and then they would waste all of their turn just basically outing a very small part of my board and I've still got three or four cards in hand and I'm recurring all my resources that I was just trying to win in that way. That's fair enough, yeah. And uh, Tr Trick Clown is very cool because you're going to make him chaining three so you're going to chain block any of your actual meaningful graveyard effects. So that's it for monsters and as you can see every single monster in this deck is either a Shadow monster or a card that helps you make Construct. Which is very important because even though Alistair is a dark monster, uh, he's also a light monster which we'll see later on. So I played three Shadow Fusion, which is just the best card in the deck. It is activate once per turn, so loads of times people are negating this and there are ways to get it back from the grave and you can search second copies, so it's just insane. Our Shadow Fusion is the quick play version, so we're just making Winder on their turn and the Sheep card in the extra deck, you can just keep summoning back your resources. And I'll definitely play six of these, you, you definitely need to see a polymerization card. 
Slide to main three, Super Poly. Super Poly is like the worst fusion card going first, but I felt I could play this card and if I open subpar, I can just set this in a Shadol and I'll gain my, all of my effects. And it's also really good at breaking the spiral board. I play some targets so I can out different parts of the spiral board and start picking it apart. It's also insane in the mirror match and obviously they can't respond to it. And if you have Meltdown, they can't even respond to all of your effects. So it just, you can really catch people off guard, especially if they don't know what the Shadol cards do. That Some of them are brand new as well. So not many people know what's going on. And play three Meltdown to just grab your Alistair. Uh, like I said, if you Fusion Summon, they can't respond, so you can do some cute stuff. Uh, you can quote unquote chain block certain cards by using your Fusion Spells on their turn. And then I also maxed out on the Invocation, so just all of this through Alistair Package. Alistair is just really good because it can grab your Polymerization and it's just a, a body and it can be a light or a dark monster. And then I played most of my cards in threes and I played extra copies of the utility cards because I did play two pot, pot of Desires. I oh, you played two pot? Yeah, I would normally play three, but like I said, uh, this deck can OTK, but it is a bit of a grind deck. I'd never wanted to actually resolve two because you're, you're searching, you're drawing, you're, you need your deck as a resource. So if you banish too much of your engine, you can't win. So I just wanted to activate Pot of Desires sometimes and draw two cards and that was kind of cool. And I played one for Wish Burial. It's just, it's just another copy of whatever Stroll monster you need. And it's also some people like to negate this card sometimes. They don't know what you're playing. And then I played one Cosmic Cycle. <laughs> so there was a lot of sort of controversy. Like I know people were going to be playing Mystic Mind. They were going to make me go first, and my deck's very fair. And I have to interact like interact with them really smartly, and they can just whack down a Mystic Mind and I lose. So I was hoping that I could get Mystic Mind and that they would think I would deck out, like I would go really deep into my deck and then I eventually could out the Mystic Mind. Also because I have Super Poly and El Shadol Fusion that if they ever did try and kill me, I could stop them from OTKing me and uh, bounce back I guess and it's again like if I draw into it. I decided to play Cosmic Cyclone, some of my teammates also said like why Cosmic Cyclone is better than other options. Um, I could hit Loonlight cards. I didn't actually play any Loonlights, but if you hit the Tiger, it's really good. And I also did hit a Last Resort equipped to a Sleeper, so he nuked his own board, which was kind of hilarious. <laughs> so I just felt that the one Cosmic, even if I'm rarely going to see it, if I do, hopefully it can interact with the game, but it was mainly just for Mystic Mind. Uh, so I think over this YCS, a lot of options were explored, like Dynamiscus and Archfiend Eccentric. Would you contemplate those options over Cyclone? Or? I definitely think Dynamiscus is a better card, but Cosmic Cyclone just offered me that flexibility going second. I didn't want to be all in on going first. I was only playing six going second cards. I didn't want to make my deck sort of struggle even more going second. So if I opened it first or second, it was still going to interact with something. And even in the mirror match, I can banish resources by banishing their spell cards that they're just activating on the field like it just had applications and i just really didn't want to play trap cards in my deck if i didn't want to and i guess that comes to the one trap card that i played which is just the universal grind card yeah this card is amazing so this card revives constructs and then construct will send a card and then when the construct gets linked away or destroyed or whatever you get the trap back so if you're interacting with your opponent and you get down to a point where they're basically top decking, you've broke their board, but you just have this in construct, you're you're going plus two every time you activate it. And obviously I'm only playing one because construct and squamata can send it straight to the grave. And you can also search it with the new fusion card. It also has some really inter neat interactions where Wendy can summon dragon or other types of shadow monsters and this can flip them face up. So you can essentially bounce cards. You can have Winder and Dragon set, and if they summon a monster that's bigger than Winder as their first summon, you can just bounce it back by banishing the trap. And it also threatens that if the trap's in Grave and you have that set up, it's not weak because if they break the Winder, you just add the trap back, you don't even use it. So it's just, it's a constant threat that you can even just set a monster to start your turn and they're worried that what should all could that be? That could be one that could bounce one of their interrupts or it could just be a hedgehog and they just have to play accordingly to that. So that's my main deck and it was, sorry, 42 cards. Um, would you, what would you try and cut down to go to 40 or would you 
not consider that. I didn't think this deck. the main deck actually mattered. I think I could play anywhere from 40 to 50 cards. It's just because the whole deck is just, it's basically polymerization, the fusion cards, and the rest of the one ons were just utility. So I, I didn't think it hurt my consistency playing those extra two cards, and it helped me actually side deck as well. So I think around this number was perfectly okay. That's good, yeah. So the extra deck, so it's very tight because I'm playing the Invoke package, but I played two copies of Construct. I've seen a lot of people cut down on uh, Construct. Yeah. It'll, it'll make sense to play three because it's your main boss monster, it grabs all your cards. So why, why cut down to two? I think because you have Meltdown and so many fusion spells as soon as you get to that one construct there's not really many ways for them to remove it out of the game like once you hit that one copy the trap can keep recurring it and you only really play two because you want to turn the first construct into a second construct sometimes if they try and interact with it so i think two was a perfect number there were growing games where i wish i had the third and i was forced to use my trap um to flip a card face up but two was fine, and I think that the rest of the cards in my extra deck, I actually made everything in my extra deck. Oh, that's good. Yeah, I, I felt that if I had a 20 card extra deck, I could probably utilize every card in it. It's just, unfortunately, we're limited to 15. Fair enough, yeah. So I played two Winder, so she's the win condition. It's not a Winder turbo deck, but we're trying to go first, and we're trying to set up Winder and other forms of interruption. So Winder is just great. It just it locks out a lot of the popular decks right now especially spiral there very few outs to winder and if they do actually have the out to winder if i've got any type of board with our style fusion there's gonna be a second winder or another way to interrupt with it so that i'm just winning game one if i'm starting with a winder so they're the old shadows and then i played one of the new fish guy so he's just really good he has three effects like he can't be destroyed which is hilarious like some guy tried to attack into him he doesn't die when you bring him back with the trap um, so he negates card on the field forever, so you can negate Sam and Great Will, you can negate things that are going to stay on the field and cause you problems later on. And if you summon him under Meltdown, you can negate a card or a boss monster on the field and they can't respond to that, so they're just completely neutered for the turn. And the most important part of this card is that it searches Shadow Fusion straight from your deck, and then it, you have to discard a card, but that also triggers one of your effects. So it's basically a plus one all the time. Yeah, it sounds amazing. And so if you start with a Stroll Fusion and they negate it, like I said before, it's an activate once per turn. So if you can get into the Fish Guy and you can link it away or fuse with it again, you can get a second copy of Stroll Fusion. And uh, as we know, Stroll Fusion with an extra monster on the field is just full combo. You're just going plus three and utilizing your whole engine. So that's all for the Shadows. Played Mechaba, so he's your main negate guy. Caligar, he's part of quite a lot of intricate combos where you can end with multiple interrupts. And uh, he's very hard for like dinosaurs and other combo decks to out, especially game one. I played the Pogo Trio, so it only won me one game, but I wanted a fire target. So it is actually both a super poly as well. You can super poly Salomon great cards with this. That's good, yeah. And it, you can steal a game. I did still one game with it where there was just three monsters on the board and it was huge. And I dropped double Alistair and it was just so much damage. Like, I didn't play Rajin or any more of these. I think there are some combos with those, but these were fine for me, and I don't think I'd play it anymore any less. And then for Lynx, I played the Gravity Controller, so he's really important. So he's the main Link one that you're going to link away your fusions, because we're not on the new Master or so. We can only have one fusion up without a Link, so he allows you to get to a second one, kind of. And his effect allows you to get rid of extra monster zone creatures and he also returns himself so you can just keep Link summoning him and he's a boss monster even though he's a thousand attack. So I played these two for Alistair so this is literally just so if your hand is all dark monsters Alistair becomes a light monster so you can fuse your straight into construct. Played one of the sheep so this is I'm making every time I'm making a Link 2 I'm just going straight into the sheep. The sheep is uh, giving me two zones and I'm going to fusion someone on my turn and revive a creature and then I'm going to Elstow in their turn, make a, another fusion, interrupt with them more and then I get someone back of material and it's just, it's a must kill threat and if they don't kill it, I'm just going straight into Boar Sword next yeah, turn. It seems insane that you can just proc its effects during both turns. Yeah, it's also, you only need a fusion to be pointing to it, so if you do just special summon to it, you can special summon. You just need to have a fusion pointing to it. Oh, fair enough. So it most people overlook that, so it's just helping you get to Borosword. Fair enough. I played the Alistair Link. 
It didn't come up very often. I wanted a second link too, because if I start my turn and they've passed back to me and there's a fusion in the extra monster zone, especially Winder, I need to be able to link her away to be able to go into Borosaur. So I thought this was the best option because it allowed me to make an invoked monster if I didn't see Alistair and I just saw Invocation. And it also allows you to extend more because if you do fusion summon, it's discard not as a cost, so you can search more cards, activate your dolls, and get a second copy of Invocation. Play Boral Sword, it's just your, if you make this after that first turn, they're dead, so. And then I played the Super Poly target, so the Ignister guy. He's cool. If you Super Poly him on their turn, you can't actually die, which is hilarious. But he's mainly, you can pick apart different boards, so you can pick apart the whole Trigate Appalooza with this card, but. So what's the um, fusion requirements for this new monster? So it's a Cyverse and a Link monster. So this is, it can be for a complete Salomon Great board, but it's also Trigate as a Cyverse and Appalooza is the Link monster. So it just breaks that apart completely and they might have like a dead Phoenix or something. So their board is pretty much just Sleeper at that point. It's also really important that this allows Al Mirage to out any Link monster like Avramax. So if you make this, you can use your Cyverse plus any Link monster. So this is super poly target for a lot of threats to me. Oh, so this could be f for anything, really? Yeah, just if there any kind of Link monster or any kind of boss monsters coming out, this can help me with super poly out it, especially game one. So, since you played Gamma in your main deck, did you ever consider playing uh, Cyframe Gear Lambda? Yeah, so Lambda was a consideration, but I actually just found myself just using Gamma as a fusion material, or I was using it before I'd even have the opportunity to link summon. That's and I think enough. the the Alistair just helped me extend more than being more defensive with a Lambda. Yeah, it seems like it contributes to the explosive plays of the deck. Yeah, definitely. It it's also a really high threat, like because I get to search an invocation and trigger a Shadol pretty much for free. Oh, it I, triggers a Shadol. Yeah, it, it does not discard as cost. Oh, that's amazing. So for my side deck I was prepared, there's a lot of combo decks, so I went with six hand traps in three Nimbiru and three Droll. So Nimbiru is an interesting one. I was bringing it in in a lot of matchups, especially if I didn't know if I was going for first or second. And it's also a light, which is very important. So if they play around Nimbiru, that's, that's great. They, I'm just gonna use it to make Construct. And if obviously they play into it, I, I get to Nimbiru them and I have a light monster for Construct. Also, the token is a light monster, so sometimes they were fine with them having a really big token because I have a bunch of fusion monsters on the field and they would have like 10,000 attack points, but I would just super poly it into a construct. That's amazing, yeah. And Droll was just the best hand trap, I thought, at stopping combo decks, like just ma mainly Spiral, actually. Just I felt it, it would pretty much end their turn and I could set up Winder like I was going first or actually kill them with Boral Sword. Yeah, it's still an amazing black card versus Spiral. Yeah, I, I think that... Also, this is the only hand trap in my deck that can be called by Grave, but I thought it was still worth playing it. If I saw it and they didn't see Call by Grave, they weren't making any combo. Fair like, enough. There was no combo that was threatening me at all. Mm -hmm. So the rest of uh, <laughs> my side is basically for when I want to go second and against back row decks. So I played these spell cards, so two Lightning Storm, two Twin Sister and two Mind Control. Mind Control is great in the mirror match and against Spiral again. I, I can side eight plus cards if I'm making them go first, if they're planning to go in second Spiral deck. If you're siding in eight plus cards, what cards would you suggest to take out for Spiral? So if I'm going second, I'm seeing a lot more cards, so I'm not prioritizing seeing um, exactly enough to make a window turn one, so I'm I'm reducing my Shadol count to one of the utility uh, count, and I'm also taking out a small part of my invoked engine to make room for that. Okay, that makes sense. So all of these cards, and also for back grid X, I played evenly matched. So I was putting in evenly matched if I was ever forcing them to go first. I wanted to go second in a lot of matchups because people really felt unprepared for Shadol, so they weren't sure if I was going first or second. So past game one, I would be making some opponents go f uh, go first and they'd hopefully brick on all of their cards. So, And obviously Shadol Fusion is like the best going second card, so if I have these to bait, bait the negates, just activating Shadol Fusion is like seeing a polymerization and two Shadols in my hand. Fair enough, yeah. So that's pretty much my side deck. 
Yep, thank you for the deck profile. Uh, any shout outs? So shout outs to my good friend Lee in East Grinstead. So he lent me a lot of cards and obviously tier zero games. Like we're like the dojo for testing. Like <laughs> I tested this deck a lot before the event and I felt very prepared just to play it and everyone supported me. I pretty much was given all my cards to play with. So shout out to everyone that helped me with the deck and especially for Matty Bagel who gave me an ulti invocation because we're like a good flex. <laughs> All right, thank you for the deck profile and uh, remember to like our Facebook page and subscribe to our YouTube channel for more content. Thank you.